Knitting Project. My name is Sharon and I'm coming to you from Surrey in the UK where I live with my family and my animals. Today is Monday the 14th of March 2022 and this is episode 125. Welcome if you are a new viewer, welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, this is my podcast all about my bits of craft I do. Um, this week it is mainly knitting. There's a tiny bit of crochet but it's mainly knitting. Um, I haven't had a chance to do my sewing this week um, and all my journaling so um, I haven't had a chance to do any of those and obviously we had a break last week so there's a lot of knitting done. I've got a few things sorted and finished and things but um, I uh, yeah, didn't really get a chance to do any sewing or um, an awful lot of my journaling. I've done my, my, like my daily journal but I haven't actually done any of my bullet journal or anything else so it's been yeah a busy week. <laughs> anyway let's get straight into it so um, my first section is admin and um, the podcast has a Ravelry group. It, I'm active on Instagram. I am SCL1TNO on Instagram. Um, please do tag me in any post um, that you want me to see because that's the easiest way for me actually to see them because Instagram's weird and only shows me cat videos at the moment. Um, possibly because we've got two new baby cats. Um, they're not babies, they're four years old but they're new to us. Um, anyway, that's for other stuff at the end. <laughs> Um, so we've got two knit alongs going on at the moment. We have got the square a day cow, which is where we are knitting a square on a cozy memory blanket or basically doing a small bit of a bigger project every day. Um, uh, I mean, last year's winner was, um, if you just have a look at Kim's blanket from last year, it's gorgeous and it was done in um, like triangles or diamonds. Beautiful, beautiful blanket. So yeah, please do um, go check out the thread for inspiration. It's not too late to join in. You may join in at any point during the year if you have a scrappy project that has been lurking at the bottom of your whip drawer for years um, and you think, well, actually, if I did a tiny bit every day, I might get this finished. Please do join in. Um, we're also doing a shawl finish along. Um, and... Um, yeah, the whole idea of the shawl finishing along for me was so I could get my Stephen West finished. I haven't even picked it up, so I, I did well there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you finished a shawl between January and um, March, the end of March, please do enter that into the finished object thread, which may or may not be up. I can't remember whether Ali said she put it up for me, but my lovely friend Ali, who is working with my friend Katie as a moderator, and um, Joe is just amazing. So I'm very grateful to these girls that help me out because I'm useless. Um, anyway, I think that's it for admin. Um, let's go into day one. So day one is socks and I finished my gingerbread socks. Um, I love these. So pretty. So this is the gingerbread yarn from, oh, I don't know, it's, it's got a little bit of extra. Do you know what? That's my Christmas tree because I blocked it in the kitchen where the Christmas tree lives. It's obviously found a little bit of it, honestly. Um, so this is the gingerbread yarn by um, Lay Family Yarn, which we're trying to persuade Kelly and Nick to dye again this year because it's beautiful. Um, and I loved how it's kind of micro striped and also you've kind of got this green stripe in as well. It came with this mini and it's all sparkly. So these are Christmas socks. They're going to go in my Christmas um, sock tin. Uh, and then when I've shown these to you, um, they're covered in fluff too. This is one that obviously fell down the back of the radiator. Um, and, oh, look. oh dear. Um, I'm fairly certain I just took that piece of fluff off and threw it in my coffee. <laughs> Smart. Um, yeah, so I did my standard vanilla sock. So I've done a two by two twisted rib. It's 60 stitches, slip stitch heel, um, my garter ridge heel turn, which I love because it's all soft and squidgy, um, a wedge toe, and obviously contrast um, heel, toe, and then I just did the cast on in the pink, um, which I really like. I'm thinking what I might do is do the cast on and maybe do like one row around the rib so it's got like the rib both ends but um that's also more ends to sewing so we'll see on that one <laughs> there are two of them i promise i have got two and yeah they're just plain vanilla knit love them going to look forward to wearing them for my countdown to christmas next year so i start wearing my christmas socks from the first of december 
and uh, you'll see that on Vlogmas hopefully as long as I'm doing it I should be I can't imagine why I wouldn't there'd be a reason I wasn't if you see what I mean um, but yeah I love these so that's that done so I've got a new cast on and I have cast on from the Handmade Sock Society now I don't know which um, which one this is actually it doesn't say on the front of the pattern um, so this is Curious Handmade, Handmade Sock Society and these are the Cliff Walk socks so that's by Helen Stewart and if you remember I, I was saying um, on a previous couple of podcasts I want to knit myself a load of shorty socks but with patterns um, which is exactly what I've done so I can show you it's living in my beautiful Elderflower Stitches bag which was one of my new bags from a couple of weeks ago and I am using, here we go, Dandelion and Dogwood, Merry Christmas. So it's a Christmas colourway, but I'm using it for a summer colourway, actually, to be fair, which you'll see why in a minute, because it's quite sort of spring colours. Um, Meg chose it from my stash because I had stash paralysis, um, and she just literally picked a skeiner off the shelf and went, here, use that one. So I was like, come go for it. It's really pretty. It's got kind of um, mustard in and it came with a mustard mini which I have subsequently misplaced which is annoying because I probably would have used it but never mind it's beautiful on its own and there'll be enough left over to make a second pair of socks so hopefully I'll find the mini for that and um, well here we go I did a whole sock <laughs> so I've got a half finished object and um, oh, it's so pretty so what I've done is just done a short cuff on it so that it just sits above whatever shoes I'm wearing and um, because of the nature of the pattern the cuff seems to do a little kind of frilly thing at the top. Um, it's a one by one twisted rib and then it carries on into this beautiful pattern which is absolutely gorgeous and I might be able to show you a bit better if I stick it on my hand there we go um can you see that let's go nice and close up for you it looks like it's cabled but it's not um i won't say the pattern's intuitive you do get a rest row every other row but the actual um pattern row i i've had to look each time i haven't been able to work out what it is i have also used stitch markers for all the pattern repeats so i did a short cuff um, standard heel flap and again garter ridge heel turn and a wedge toe which I think are all as in pattern I think that's all that's the same as the pattern except for the fact the heel turn is not a garter ridge and I have in actual fact cast on it's only a tiny one but I have cast on my second sock so I can start going round and round on the rib um, now I use I, I knit my socks on two circulars and I'm using 2.5 millimeter um, chow goose. I like metal needles when I'm doing um, lace work because I find it just slides easier and it's easier to do. Um, the wooden ones are a bit grippier and um, also they're not as, quite as pointy. These are perfect points for me. They're not so pointy that I put my um, eye make a hole in my finger where I'm pushing the needle through but um, they're pointy enough that I can easily do lace work with them whereas um, the higher higher sharps I end up putting huge holes in my fingers and it's very painful um, and then I've got a third one because when I'm knitting on two circulars in a lace pattern when I'm doing the gusset decreases I put the lace repeat on one and I use the two circulars for the gusset decreases so I end up with three for a little while until I decreased the gusset sounds like that's a lot of needles but it actually works fine and it's not really any different to using kind of four dpn's um it's just that your kind of your dpn's are attached to a cable <laughs> so you're not going to lose them which is why i don't knit socks on dpn's because i always lose the um double pointed needle and if i stick it down my plait which i've been known to do i can go out with them it in which not a good look but uh, so yeah so that's what I'm doing they're the cliff walk socks and they're really pretty so I've got first one off the needles please bear in mind that my progress is not normally this much it's only because 
um, we've got two weeks worth and quite frankly I haven't done anything else crafting wise other than knit um, because my time has been with my crafting time um, knitting is always my first love so if my time is really short and really precious the one thing I tend to pick up is my knitting and other crafts go by the wayside so that's why it's very knitting heavy um, but yeah so that's day one socks okay so part of my shawl day this week I blocked my Matham so I thought I'd show you it all blocked I love this so much it's so pretty so this um, is the shawl that I have made now <laughs> now now I found it and finished it it's going to be the shawl I wear for my daughter's wedding so my eldest daughter Katie gets married at the end of April and um, I will be wearing this over my dress and I absolutely love it I really do so it's amazing I think you saw I showed it to you unblocked so it's amazing what blocking a shawl can do it is just fabulous and I adore it so I'm going to take it off because I don't want anything to happen to it <laughs> so that's the Matham shawl by Helen Stewart Curious Handmade um, and it's knit in hedgerow yarns in Pampas and is it Country Garden? Garden Bouquet? Can't remember something like that it's very pretty and I love it and I, yeah it's beautiful now it's blocked so I finally got around to blocking it I should also say I am wearing an EDT that I've modified to add lace sleeves and a lace hem um, by Isabel Kramer and this yarn's all a family yarn so my next entry for shawl day which is day two has been living in my elderflower stitches bag and um, this is the brioche adventure wrap by um, Jonathan Tallow or Jonathan but I think it's Jonathan and this is my first foray into proper brioche project and I've loved it really loved it I'm very tempted to make another one um, possibly with um, an advent from this year at Christmas but I finished it um, at least I finished all the knitting and I have sewn in all the ends but I do need to block it so it does need blocking so this is knit on four point um, in on 3.5 millimeter needles but I missed a knit, knit it on 2.5 millimeter needles for some reason so mine's not going to be as big as others but um, I, I think it's going to block out quite wide if I'm honest um, I'm not so much worried about the width I just want to block my edges a bit straighter it's really pretty did I show you both sides I don't know if I showed you both sides but let's just go that way as well so that you see both sides and I'm yeah looking forward to it's quite big actually I'm looking forward to being able to wear it so scarf ways Oh, oh, wear it like a shawl. It always gets caught cool. my hair grips doing this. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's going to be so, it's going to be super warm. It really is. So, yeah, it's not lovely. Ooh. So, yeah, I just need to block it. So, that will be another one you'll see probably in a few weeks time when I finally blocked it I could do with a really nice sunny day um, so I can block it on the blocking mats in the garden but yeah so this was made from a advent calendar from Lay Family Yarn from 2020 so it's a fingering weight so it's two fingering weight um, alternate colours it's really clever the construction is really clever in the way it's done so I would recommend the pattern even if you've never done brioche before um, I had done like a tiny swatch of brioche at a class and to be honest so many years ago that I can't remember 
having done it so I was pretty much a beginner with it um, and I just kind of got on with it um, if you just check on YouTube there's loads of tutorials on how to do brioche some are better than others as I found out um, and once it clicks it clicks which is really nice I'm really pleased with it so that's my day two shawl day so day three is um, garment day and it's my Felix sweater and that's hanging out in my lovely big um, So Ray Me bag which I love and oh, this is the Felix pullover Um, it's by Savory Knitting. So hopefully I've got a pattern. I have got a pattern in here. Here we go. And I'm using some commercial yarn, which is Aztec Aran, which is James Seabrett. I was reading a little bit about the the history of the company, and it's um, a UK company. That started from a family mill which is kind of cool um, and their, their ethos is to try and use locally sourced yarn for their their yarn um, lo locally sourced fleece for their yarn yeah I love this so this is um, an acrylic alpaca um, blend it's 90% al um, acrylic 10% alpaca I think we worked out it's about 2 99 a 100 gram ball and oh I'm using six millimeter needles which is a bit like knitting with tree trunks but they are a knit pro something or other rosewood they look like they're probably rosewood aren't they so yeah knit pros rosewood it's really sweet actually because um, the more I use them the more they're kind of changing color and um, kind of getting like a faded look almost so this is my Felix. Um, I'm not sure where I was when I last showed you this. Had I finished both the sleeves? Or had I just finished one sleeve? My little marker is halfway up that sleeve. So I think I must have finished one sleeve. And then, there we go, that way around. I've done the other sleeve too. So it's now got two sleeves. I'm going to go back a bit so you can actually see it. And now I'm just going round and round on the body. Um, the body was there where that marker is last time you saw it so I've done a fair amount um, and I've got to decide how long I want it I love this really looking forward to having it done there's a lot of Felixes around at the moment um, a lot of people are knitting them it's done on uh, in an Aran weight yarn and this Oh, I'm wondering whether my sleeves are too long. Um, this is the largest size. That's where I was going with that comment. I'm thinking, what am I trying to say? So yeah, I did the biggest size. And I love it. I really do. It's a giant sock stage now. So it's been, um, with having patterned socks, um, my grab and go project to go out of the house if I'm in a hurry and knit in the car has been this so I'm hoping with using it like that um this will get finished fairly quickly because it's easy just to sit in the car and go round and round and round in circles um yeah I mean it doesn't fit in your handbag <laughs> that's for certain it needs to go out in its own bag but um if you if you're not planning on taking it into a building this is working really well um, if I need building um, mindless knitting, I haven't got any at the moment, so I probably should address that. But um, I have got a pair of Sherry Iris socks that I started last year that I found a few days ago and I have subsequently lost again. So when I, when I locate them, I will make sure they're all ready to grab and go. They can just sit in my handbag for those times when you actually need a smaller project than something this size. But yeah, I'm I'm loving this. I really am. It's a beautiful colour. Um, I'm not going to dwell on it too much because I am aware that you've seen this so many times. Oh, I am hoping that I will get it finished for you soon and get it off the rotation. So that's day three. And then day four is my Squiddle Village blanket. 
and that's also in an out of flower stitches bag and here's a bit of a mess if I'm honest so that's the colour I'm using to join my squares together which oh, I can't remember the name of it Deep Breath so that's called Deep Breath it's part of the Squiddle Village um, collection and I'm adding in I just bought May so these have got to be April's April's colours I've done all the squares I've crocheted all the squares but as you can see in a moment I am part way through adding this strip here to my blanket <laughs> so that where that's holding my yarn that's as far as I got so I need to add the rest of my square so the my strips is 12 squares long come here you yeah so my there we go so my um strips are 12 squares long ah oh, those two greens are very similar oh they're not actually not in real life they just look similar on the camera um so this is how they're lining up this particular pack was a bit darker than the rest of them so it's kind of gone a bit moody in the middle and then I've got left over from that I have got eight square an eight square strip one two three four five six seven eight yeah so that I won't attach until I've got the other four from May's on um yeah so I'm doing just granny stitch round and round for six rounds and I can get an average of two squares out of that um, sometimes I'm short I was short on this one where's the end of it there is that the end that's the end yeah was I short on that one there's the end of that one yeah I was short on this one but the colour I used is from um, the purple that I had in my Brioche Adventure Advent um, and it, it blended in so well you can't really tell it's just those darker stitches there but you can, unless I point it out to you you're not going to notice I don't think luckily because um, oh, in my opinion this is just my opinion it might be true but um, I feel that dyers have kind of a style I don't know but they have a look and I've got so much of Kelly's yarn that if I am short I can normally find a mini that kind of blends in or a, a main skein that blends in enough for me just to finish it off because I'm only ever short like three or four um, clusters so it really doesn't matter um, in hindsight I would have only done five on each, five rounds on each but I wanted a bigger blanket which is why I went on six um and most of them i guess i get the full um the both um squares out of there's any occasionally i don't so we'll live with it it's my blanket after all if i don't mind then nobody else does <laughs> so you can see how it's kind of getting this patchwork effect and if you um have a long-term view of the podcast you will know i did the same for a christmas um themed blanket which has been adopted by a cat and I haven't been able to put it away yet I need to get that back off of her smudge lights laying on it um, so yeah that's my squiddle village so I've finished crocheting all the squares I'm attaching the one strip that I'm going to attach and then I have all the ends to sew in because apparently that's what I do but um, if you're also if you know the podcast you know I'm a willing end weaver so it really doesn't bother me if I've got some ends to weaving um, and I'm using a three millimeter clover crochet hook which fits really well into that little pocket in my bag there <laughs> one of the reasons I love um, Susie's bags apart from the fact that they're like the prettiest bags ever their pockets the way she does her pockets that just really suit me I can get my scissors in one I can get a pen in one the pattern fits in the big one it's great right so that is it for knitting um, I've just got my square a day to show you
Right, so my square a day is living in this giant bucket bag by um, Mrs. Brown's Bags. And I am using Hedgerow Yarns Minis. And this is what I'm knitting as my square a day. So, I've got lots of squares to show you this time. That's the one I finished this morning actually. So I've done all of these. And I love them so much. <laughs> I do like a hetero yarn mini. Um, and then on this side, I've got that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. So this is naturally somehow not square <laughs> it's naturally going to becoming an um a rectangle now i could sort fudge it and sort it out so that it's square but um i'm thinking actually a rectangle might be more use so i may not do that um but i'll still show a video of this all squared off when it's done yeah, it's so pretty i love it so much i really do I call it my gentle blanket because it's just gentle pretty colours and I'll be honest to say it's a joy to work on every time I pick it up I just sit there admiring it so that's my square a day um, and that's the end of the knitting content I have however got the odd um, happy mail to show you so happy mail is not coming out in any particular order because the basket's packed so I'm just going to grab and go. But the first thing I've got actually was um, in order to help out an individual in Ukraine. Um, I, I saw on Instagram about downloading files. And obviously I do loads of journaling. And I have found a shop called Charm Studio. Um, there we go. I'll link her in the show notes. Or him, not sure. Um... And they, she does loads of digital downloads for papers for journaling. And I've got a, I've printed them out because they are so gorgeous. And I use background papers like this to stick photos on. So these are perfect for that. Um, so I ordered a couple of packs and I'm definitely going to order a couple more because I love her aesthetic or his aesthetic as I said I'm not sure which their aesthetic there we go um, so yeah just a little way of helping um, and I've just noticed actually everything is 50% off at the moment um, so bargain as well but it's just a tiny bit of helping a, an actual individual so that was that one which is um, the Lay Family Yarn um, 2022 Easter Countdown box. Um, and if you open, wish to open the last package on Easter Sunday, your countdown will start on April the 6th. So um, hopefully that's what I'll remember to do. Um, that is how it looks. There was an edible treat in there. There is no longer an edible treat in there. I'll confess. I ate one from in here, Meg ate one from a different one. So that is um, the Lay Family Yarn one, which I cannot wait. Then I also got, nowhere to put things, um, this one, which is simply beautiful. I've already undone it because, you know, but this is the Sherry Iris one. Now this is not the Hurries to Countdown box because I bought that a couple of days ago. This is a spring collaboration box. No, this is a spring celebration box. Um, I was lucky enough to get a summer celebration box. 2019, I think it was. Um, and at that point I'd hurt my back really badly and I was in a terrible amount of pain 
but one thing I look forward to every day was getting up and knitting the mini from my summer celebration box into a scrappy pair of socks um, and I, yeah I absolutely loved it so I have very fond memories of these celebration boxes now I am not going to show you <laughs> specifics so it comes with a project bag but because people may not have opened theirs yet I don't want to open it so I'm just going to show you imagine a project bag but because you can kind of see it through the um, tissue paper I don't want to hold it up so there we go aren't they pretty so I'm going to make myself a scrappy pair of socks from these and I'm going to start counting down um, I mean I'll be honest and say I have no idea what day this one starts because it doesn't say on there um, but I guess March the 21st would be the start of spring um i might just message sherry and say oh, what days do you think everybody's going to start because i don't want to spoil anybody and i want to use the project bag that's with it to keep it in um okay yeah let me message sherry about that one but it's beautiful absolutely beautiful so that's that one okay so what else have we got Dandelion and Dogwood were selling minis um, in aid of the Ukraine and they're, they're just a mystery bundle and that's the one I got which I love, I love these colours they're so pretty don't know what I'm going to make with them but they, they're going to be my pets for a little while until I do um, so yeah that was Dandelion and Dogwood sorry about the rustling not bustling Sharon. Um, Susie who is Elderflower Stitches um, was having a sale of a few of her items one of which I can't believe I got <laughs> I'll be honest um, I was late seeing her posts on Instagram and everything always goes so quickly that I fully expected when I messaged her to say is this still there it had gone it is one of her around bottom bags now she doesn't make them anymore which is really sad because I love her round bottom bags like, very, very much so my um the one that my brioche adventure is in is a round bottom bag I absolutely love them for sock bags now again she's got all the amazing pockets inside oh isn't it on them? lovely and a beautiful fabric as well and she very kindly sent me a couple of minis as well which are beautiful um and yeah so that, that's her card on the first stitches she's got a podcast too yeah i love this absolutely love it so very pleased i was able to snag that oh, love them i love the way they just sort of, sort of sit there they look full even when they're empty brilliant i love those bags <laughs> um right next up I got the spring journal box from Rachel of So Amy and I don't actually open this. It's so pretty, there's so many lovely things. So there's a package that says spring is coming. I haven't opened this. And inside we've got oh that's cute a little birdie stamp I'm hoping the lighting's better when I add it this back than I can see at the moment some green ink oh they're pretty and some flower stickers I need to organize my sticker collection I feel it's got a bit out of control but then I do use a lot of them in my diary but in my journal I should say um, and then there's this beautiful little spring tag some little springy bits it's also got some stickers in it um, 
some gorgeous washi tape glue stick <laughs> the prettiest little pen cherry blossom time it is indeed cherry blossom time our cherry tree is out in blossom at the moment it's beautiful um, oh this is pretty this has got all sorts of papers and things in it there we go that's a good way of showing you so it's got all sorts of little little bits and pieces in that that I can use and it comes oh comes with a cup of tea <laughs> I might have that in a minute and a journal book and this is a blank one a blank journal book which um, I've nearly finished one of mine so that would be good to replace and a little I love these because I often use them just to um, clip like photos and things in if I don't want to stick them in so that's the spring journal box next up is my club from Woolly Goodness if you've not seen the Grin Bad Club for this month look away it comes with a cup of tea um, so that's Grin Bad and the Seven Soups and this is Timmy Grinbad. So that's Timmy. And this is a collab she's doing with her husband. And this is one of his original artwork prints. And yeah, look at that. It's such a cool colour. They're going to make some fantastic jelly roll socks and it's really sparkly. So I get um, the 50 gram main skein and the 20 gram is it a 20 gram or is it a 10 20 gram mini um so they'll be perfect for jelly roll socks oh yeah really like them so that's that one everything's coming in boxes so making my life slightly difficult when i want to put it away right another club if you haven't had the Giddy Yarns um, so Beatrix Potter Sock Club for February, look away. Um, I'm getting it on her 100% um, Superwash Merino DK weight base. This is beautiful. It's, this is the tail of Squirrel Nutkin. That's so pretty. Really pretty. So that's that one. And then finally, I think this ba basket's empty now. Yeah, I got a um, Sherry Iris scrappy fabric bundle. Um, I'm fairly certain that's got a cup of tea in the middle of it. I'm going to be all right for tea by the end of this episode. Oh, Earl Grey, yum! <laughs> I do like a nice cup of Earl Grey. And that's how it comes. So I'm going to use this in my stitching journal. And if I just flop them all out, we'll see if we can just run through them quickly. So we've got some mending cotton, vintage mending cotton. And some lace. And then I'm just going to hold these up so you can see them. This is the fabrics. That's quilted. It's got actual quilting on the top. That's cool. That one's falling out. More lace. Oh, that one fell out too. I'll show you the ones that fell out in a minute. So some of these are like tablecloths and things. I'm not doing a very good job of this. There's a lot of them falling out. <laughs> That's pretty. It's quite stiff. It's um, a damask. And then the ones that fell out are that one. I wonder how well you can see them. That with a pretty pretty blanket stitch around the side. Some lace. A doily. And that's it. So you get quite a lot in her vintage scrap bundles. 
so all I have left now is news from the knitting project um, we have two new members of the family my youngest daughter Meg has rehomed two cats they're four years old um, called Spartan and Echo um, they're super sweet and they're super shy they haven't met our cats yet uh, well Spartan has <laughs> Spartan escaped from her room because they're living in Meg's bedroom at the moment and he um he decided he wanted to go out the door so she let him and um he he went for a wander he wandered happily past the dog and Bella just sort of opened one eye was like oh it's another cat and went back to sleep again um and he didn't seem bothered by her at all um but he went around the corner of the door into the lounge and he encountered Demi who hissed at him at which point he scarpered back into Meg's room um at Smudge saw him and didn't seem to do to, well she didn't actually acknowledge his presence so she seemed to ignore him um but yeah debbie was not impressed um but i'm sure they will adjust they always do there's always that period of adjustment which is a pain in what's it but um it, you get through it um echo is far more cautious she has taken up residence under meg's bed at the moment and um she comes out for food and she comes out for cuddles with meg which is brilliant so she's really bonded with meg um but during the day when we go in to check on them and give them cuddles um echo tends to hide under the bed so she's not settled as well as spartan has yet spartan just comes running up to you for head scratches and wants to cuddle so we'll see how they go um i shall hopefully have a couple of photos at the end we haven't got very good photos of them yet because um well they, they just aren't there <laughs> you know very difficult to take a photograph of a cat under the bed and um also um spartan's really difficult to photograph because he's just one big black bundle of fluff um, in fact there should be a photo i think of him sitting on her bed coming up that it's just literally like a silhouette of a cat you can't see any of his features he's actually facing the camera as well it's not like it's the back of him he <laughs> he should have eyes and a nose etc but it's really difficult to spot um but they are really sweet bless them we went away this weekend just gone in the caravan finally it was working and nothing went wrong so that was a relief um we had a lovely time away we went down to Hythe in kent um had some i made a picnic and went and sat by the sea um on the saturday no sh no idea where we were i think we were near sandgate um we were sort of on a bit between Hyde and Sandgate, so whether that's got a different name or whether it was actually Sandgate, I don't know. Um, but it was really nice, it was lovely. And then we drove inland, um, sort of bypassing, we cut through from kind of Hyde to, what's it called? Sandwich. I went to um, the Pegwell Country Park. Um, but going through that, you go through an area of outstanding natural beauty, um, which is just gorgeous. It's such a pretty drive. So we did that, and then we went for a walk in Sandgate. So there should be some video footage of all this going on um, at the end. So I will actually have something for a vlog as well. Um, yeah, so, and the weekend before... So the reason there was no podcast is because we were getting the cats last Monday and I normally record on a Monday, um, we were getting everything ready. So I didn't really have a chance to record. I've also had an extremely busy working week in a good way. Um, it's it's not been a stressful, busy working week. It's just really busy. Um, but I'm kind of doing a fun project, which I'm really enjoying. So, um, And I'm the type of person that gets very focused. So sometimes I have to be told to come up for it. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah I just didn't have a chance last week to record um, but at least I have now got loads of things to show you so it does make me wonder whether I might be better off recording every other week what do you think are you going to kill me if I decide that I'm just going to do every other week or should I go back to weekly I mean it's going to be a bit spasmodic between now and May anyway because of um, the wedding but um I certainly won't be recording the Monday after the wedding. I can guarantee that. So I won't be recording on the 1st of May. And then I go in holiday during May as well. So I'm hoping that I'll vlog that. Um, yeah, I'm hoping I'll do daily vlogs for that one. We're going to... Um, somewhere in the southwest. That's not too far from somebody I really, really love. And um, I'm hoping to meet up with her. So um, I'm not going to say too much now, just in case A, it doesn't happen. And um, it would be a nice surprise if we sit there and chat to each other for a little while. 
Um, so yeah, I think it's just bear with me. Don't don't expect one every Sunday. <laughs> I'm still going to keep it so that I record on the Monday and then up. Then they go live on the Sunday because it does give me all week to actually edit it, which is useful. Um, but yeah, just don't hold me to it. Don't worry that there's something wrong if I haven't um, put an episode up on Sunday. But I do think, actually, as we're talking it through here, I do think that between now and the wedding, going fortnightly would be a good move. Let's not put a schedule on it. If it's out, it's out. If it's not, don't worry. <laughs> I think it's what I'm saying. Right. On that note, I have got to go because I need to tidy up my room and get on with some work. So I hope you're all okay wherever you are. Take care and I will talk to you when I next see you. Thank you.